Welcome to the MMA Fancast. My name is Luke Pace, and welcome back to everyone to the show who is already a subscriber to the channel. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe so you can see more great interviews, including the one coming at you right now. Coming back on the show now as an undefeated professional MMA uh, fighter is Latisha, the Honey Badger. Ma, oh, Latisha, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm always so excited um, to come on and talk to you. Uh, one of my favorite uh, places to do interviews. So thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, it's my honor. Thanks for the thanks for the kind words. You are always a fun person to interview. And uh, we're going to get into the details of the fact that you made your pro MMA debut uh, a few days ago for CFFC, which is a, a big time regional uh, promotion. Uh, but one of the things we're going to talk about first is just the fact that you are now officially a, a three sport professional athlete in both boxing kickboxing k1 format kickboxing now mma so what is it like to be such a well-rounded fighter and what is it now like for you to be a professional uh three sport uh fighter yeah it's uh it's been a long journey um it's been an exciting journey uh i first started with pro boxing it was just the easiest way to kind of get my foot in the door as a pro fighter um and i was getting you know good fights and then um you know eventually got an offer for pro kickboxing which is i consider one of my stronger um attributes as a fighter and then um you know matching for that kind of got tough um and matching for mma i was trying to go professional in mma a about 2 years ago and and I, like i said the matching's been tough uh it's slim pickings for women but um you know with that being said it finally happened and yeah it's exciting that i've i've you know, competed in all three sports. Um, I think it just proves that I've, you know, I'm well-rounded. I've, I've improved on every aspect of my game, obviously much more improvement it to come, but um, yeah, it's, it's a really cool, it's a really cool thing to, to experience. Yeah. And congratulations to you and to your coaches, your well-roundedness comes from your hard work, but also uh, your trainers to be so well-versed to, to uh, for people that don't know, every one of those uh, sports are, kind of their own their own journey and their own discipline boxing obviously uh kickboxing um and then also mma let's talk about cffc that's a big time promotion how did it come to you to make your pro debut they tend to take kind of more established fighters um most of the, most of the time so how did that all come together uh, so initially uh, a little bit of confusion on my side i guess they were trying to match me for muay thai and then um, I was like, oh, yeah, I don't I don't do Muay Thai. I said, you know, if if you have MMA, I would be interested in that. Um, and I had to make some sacrifices on my end. I went down a weight class because I was previously competing at 125, went down to 115. Um, so and then we were able to make a match happen. So, you know, I'm very grateful that they had me on. I'm very grateful it worked out that way. Everything happens for a reason. Um, I can also say I've been a bit of a squeaky wheel. So mm -hmm. I've been in a lot of inboxes over the past year trying to get fights. Um, but yeah, it, it was great that it, it worked out how it did. Well, that is wonderful. I'm glad it all came together. Great job, like asserting yourself and clarifying, you know, a lot of times behind the scenes, it can be particularly at the pro level, amateur level as well. It can be kind of hard to, to clearly get what you want. And in your case, clarifying from Muay Thai, MMA. And then also there's a compromise a lot of times in, in weight, you know, those type of, those type of things goes a long way. So what was it, what was it like? I know we've talked before about the preparation side, the sports psychology side, the, uh, the physical side as well. So what was that weight cut like and, and how did that play into the mentality? Because a weight cut is, is mentally draining as much as it is physically draining. Right. Yeah. So I actually reached out for some help for the weight cut um, because I knew I probably wasn't going to be able to do it safely on my own. So shout out to Sweet Science Kitchen, um, Amy Peduto. Um, I hired her on and she made the weight cut so easy. And, um, you know, I felt great in there the night of the fight. I didn't feel drained. My cardio felt fantastic. I felt very clear as far as mentally. So, um, you know, it was it was great to have help with the weight cut. And that's something I'll probably continue to do with future fights. Um, as far as the other preparations, um, you know, we make changes every camp. Um, I feel like the intention for this camp obviously was a little different with it being MMA. So we focused a lot on, you know, more wrestling, more um, striking styles that work in MMA. Um, and, you know, it was a great camp. Um, the, the cardio always is 
number one priority for me. And we took great care of that with the five minute rounds. That's my first time fighting a five minute round. Um, and three of them, um, you know, to be exact. So, um, you know, my boxing gym in, in Harrisburg, United Central PA, my coach, Claudie, um, he's one of the main people that kind of gets my cardio, right? So he definitely took care of that for me, this camp. And then of course, my, my team at Gracie um, took care of the rest and it, it worked out perfect. Well, and that is that, that is a great response. And now that we're talking about the specific fight, your debut went to a uh, unanimous decision, which in many ways, um, it might not be as flashy as a first round finish, but for a pro debut, it's probably the best because you get 15 minutes, you get to automatically a answer the question about cardio, pacing, you know, oh, there's a lot more that goes into it. Sometimes we've even seen it at the high level UFC, if somebody rattles off, you know, six or seven first round wins, and then they're in the UFC. And then the first time they get out of the first round, that can, there could be a lot of questions. So what was it like if you can kind of round by round from your perspective, as far as the flow of the fight? Um, you know, it's, uh, I like that you mentioned that I didn't think of it that way, as far as the, like fighting the, the full three rounds for like your first fight. Um, to me, I was a little disappointed because obviously you always want to, you know, you want to get a finish and you want it to be a for sure win. Um, but now that you made that point, um, that's a fair point. Uh, round by round though. Um, yeah, I felt great. First round definitely had the first round in the bag. Second round, in my opinion, I still had that in the bag. I, there was some controversy over it. Um, but in my opinion, I had control four of the five minutes. Um, you know, uh, the last minute I, I didn't have great control and maybe it looked bad, but it, on paper, um, I, I was, I was up in control. I was up in damage. I was up in, uh, you know, uh, striking and things like that. And then the last round I, I for sure lost, um, and that's something that, you know, is upsetting to me. I could have done better, of course. And there's some things we have to change for next camp. Um, you know, so it wasn't a perfect fight, uh, by any means it wasn't perfect. Um, there was a lot of things I need to work on, but there were a lot of good, good things that happened in the fight. And I think there were a lot of things that happened that kind of proved my worth to a lot of people that still have a little bit of doubts of like me as a fighter. Oh. Um, so just to be able to prove that, you know, win or lose is really important to me. Well, I, I appreciate the breakdown and obviously the, the honesty. I think one of the things uh, that fighters need is obviously the confidence to get in there, but uh, the, the honesty with them and their coaches to work on the areas to improve. Um, it's also, it's also one of the things with the unanimous decision uh, that it, it makes sense that you got it. It's hard for me to think that, four minutes of control out of five isn't winning the round. So it makes sense to me that you got the round. One of the things that I know coaches, including when I coached, um, and I'm sure you do this drill too, is finishing rounds strong. It's, it's kind of, to me, it's almost odd how much the last 30 seconds can get weighted by the judges. Now, every judge makes their own decision. I'm glad I'm not a judge, but it is strange to some degree how a judge can sometimes look at the last 30 seconds and almost forget the, the the first four and a half minutes of the of the round. So um, another big thing with you know with it being Nana's decision and ending on uh, like you said not the best round uh, mentally. How was it sort of not only continuing to fight but also keep yourself from like we would say out of danger. Like keep yourself from from the knockout or the submission, knowing that you're up and up and but also knowing that like that round wasn't going your way. What was that? play like uh mentally and also um you know when you were in there as far as your strategy yeah and i uh, i see what you're saying and to me i felt like i could have definitely taken more risk in the last round even though i was up two rounds um to be honest i took a, virtually no damage throughout right. the entire fight including the last round that i lost um it was mainly uh you know more control time than it was damage or striking or anything like that um but but still, that's not it doesn't look good. It's not good for me. And and that's something we need to troubleshoot. I need to be just a little more, you know, urgent to to just stay on top and like get my points in. And like you said, ending the round looking good. That's really important. And I didn't do that in the last round. Certainly not. So, yeah, I mean, mentally, I was I was OK. I, I knew for sure I had the first two rounds and the judges, all three judges saw it the same way. Mm. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess just some, some mental uh, tuning up on finishing the fight just a little stronger next time, regardless of if I'm winning or losing the rounds beforehand. 
Sure. Makes perfect, makes perfect sense. And we've talked before about the, the mental game, the mental sharpness. And I think part of your journey has been to kind of be balanced, right? It's so easy to fall into a cognitive distortion of all or nothing thinking. And the fight game can be very much that way where, or, you know, a fighter either, either wants to look at their fight as them being perfect, which is never really the case. And then therefore they're not maybe willing to work and continue to, to grow. Or a lot of times it's the other way where a fighter has had a lot of good things in the fight, but kind of fixates on the, the low points and then it can feel overwhelming and depressing. So I think you're, you're clearly coming a long way with being able to look at both the, the good, the thing that went really well, and the areas for growth. I often say, you know, it, it's never really a failure. It's a it's an opportunity for growth, like you like you pointed out. Um, you also mentioned kind of proving, you know, proving to people or answering the, the question of people that still don't think uh, you belong in there or whatever that thing is. And, and I understand a lot of people do find it motivating to kind of prove people wrong. But I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a licensed professional mental health counselor. So from the mental side, I would say it's always best to want to prove yourself right than someone else wrong. And I, I know like one of the big things that I always talk about to, to people I, I work with is that internal locus of control, which is really about what you're doing, what you can control, because you really can't control what other people think of you. There are people that are undefeated. There are people at the top level of every sport, every profession that people bad mouth or, you know, or talk or talk trash about. So I think it really comes down to getting rid of that external viewpoint where yes, it's annoying, but like not focusing on that, focusing on what you could control coming out of this fight. How do you think you're doing kind of focusing on uh, the things that are within your own control, your own ability going in to your future, whether that be boxing, kickboxing or MMA? Yeah, I think um, within the past, like since I went pro as a fighter, the mental change from, okay, like not worrying so much about what other people are thinking of me, just focusing on the fact that like, I've kind of accepted going into almost every fight, I'm going to be the underdog. But to me, like, that's okay. Um, It's it is what it is. Like, I know my ability. I know my worth. I'm not perfect every fight. I've lost fights and I've won fights and I've lost fights in a in a bad way. And I've won fights in a great way. And, you know, regardless of what other people are going to think, I'm still going to do it. I know what I need to work on. Um, and I, I know, like you said, we really shouldn't worry about what other people think. It's completely out of my control. And, and my mental state on that is really just focusing on the things I can control. But it does give a little fuel to the fire when, you know, people are like, you know, people told me I can't fight boxing, MMA and kickboxing as a pro. Right before I went pro, they're like, you know, you have to pick one. You can't do all three. But that just made me want to do all three. Sure, <laughs> so sure. I did. And I did. So it's, it's a, I, I get what you're saying. It's a little bit of a, of sometimes you need that, um, that motivation, but I've been really good about just focusing, like staying in my lane, focusing on what I'm doing and just proving to myself that, that I'm enough and that I can do it. That makes perfect sense. And, and obviously I, I, you're finding what works for you on the mental side, the motivation side. And, and absolutely, like we, we call that kind of bulletin board material as far as people kind of saying things that kind of, you know, that, that is motivating externally, but it really comes down to the to the motivation within yourself. You're always so uh, focused on what you can control and the progress. Um, and sometimes the, the progress you're making in the, in the gym doesn't show up in the cage or the box ring. Obviously, recently for you, it has been. And and we use the expression in, in coaching, like putting it all together. So really, you have been doing that for you. Less than a week removed from your pro MMA debut. Just in your own, in your own game plan, would it be your focus to want to stay in MMA and only do kickboxing or boxing if kind of, you know, if that came along? Or are you kind of open to all three at the same time or is there a priority right now? I would really love to run with MMA. I think that the the there's going to be better matching available for me now that I drop down a weight class. Um, I think there's going to be more opportunity for me. Um, I think I'll be able to get, you know, onto bigger shows easier. Um, if kickboxing presents itself and it's the right match and it's, you know, it works out. I'm totally not opposed to it. Um, I'm I'm open to open to boxing, but I'd rather keep MMA like the priority right now. You know, I just had my first fight. Um, there's a you know, I, I feel like I'm just like breaking the ice now with this. Like this is literally just the beginning of it. Um, and I really want to see where it takes me. I just want to keep the ball rolling with MMA if I can. I think that's the best path to go right now. 
Well, I mean, that's why I asked that question because it really comes down to where you want to focus on. Um, it is incredible the progress you're making. And, and obviously, if everything works out um, and you continue to take the, the lead in trying to look for matches and trying to, you know, it can be tough. Not only not only you being a, a female, but for every pro fight you win, it gets harder to get matches because pro records are forever. And so people out, outside of the big organizations, CFC is is, is pretty big. Um, but outside of the big ones, it can be hard for people to want to risk their, you know, their their good record or whatever it is. So it might be challenging, but obviously I hope you're able to continue in the MMA world. You mentioned um, always being an underdog. And of course, I think that is, uh, that's kind of a good mindset for you to have where you're not, uh, where you kind of expect things to be harder. And, and I, I, I like, as you know, I like to bring in the psychology and I, of course I, I get to uh, serve kind of America's finest and combat veterans dealing with PTSD. And, and one of the things that, that usually comes up is the mindset that when you, when you expect things to be really hard and then they're less hard than you think, it's kind of like, Oh, is it only that bad? That's kind of a, a survivor mindset versus the other way, which is kind of like, I didn't expect it to be that hard. And then when it was that hard, I didn't know what to do. Right. And so I think th there's a warrior ethos, whether it be combat, obviously, which is much more significant life or death or, mm -hmm. or even, um, even martial arts combat. I think the mindset that you want to train for it to be harder than harder than it might actually end up being is always best than the other way around. That's that classic gym t-shirt, you know, train hard, fight easy, but it really is a good mindset to have. Um, for you, what are your thank yous or kind of your, that, that gratitude, that attitude of gratitude that's so good for our mental health as you, as you kind of look back now on your successful pro debut win? Gratitude is something I try to practice a lot, not just like after, you know, a successful fight, but just like throughout the whole camp. Um, I'm super grateful for, for having a, a gym to train at, at Gracie 717, for the team there, for for the um you know the members there and then of course you know my coaches there that really like take the time to to work with me and figure out what I need to work on and things I'm doing good um and then of course I'm grateful for having uh, a boxing coach that truly has just put my boxing on a different level and not just for boxing mm -hmm. I mean for kickboxing for MMA like it just shows in every fight and um he really puts a lot of effort into my strength and conditioning um, his like number one thing is that if, if your cardio is there and you have the heart to do it, you're, you know, you're going to make it a lot further than the majority of people. Um, and then of course I'm grateful for all my supporters, my sponsors that supported me through the wins, through the losses. Um, it's great. They, they're always there no matter what. And that's more than I could ever ask for. Um, so yeah, I, there's a lot of things to be grateful for. And of course my mental, my mental sports psychologist, uh, great sports minds, um, really that's the the turning point for me to being a successful fighter and and making it to the top I don't think I would be where I'm at right now if it wasn't for her so yeah just lots of gratitude all around for everybody well, it is that is really a, a great mindset to always have and, and a wonderful way to to wrap this interview up I think it's really always great having you on the show because you're so willing to talk about how it's a personal growth journey. You know, life really is a personal growth journey, whether it's professionally or personally or spiritually, emotionally, or a mixture of all of them. So it's always great to see you doing well, obviously in the cage and out of the cage and out of the cage, what your, what your bigger life is matters more than in the cage. So I'm glad you're doing well in all those areas. Always an honor to have you on the show. Thanks so much for taking time out. A big congratulations to tonight's guest. Uh, this You've been listening to Luke Basin with MMA Fancast and the one, the only, the Honey Badger, Latisha Maul, undefeated pro MMA fighter. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Always great having you on.